finished describing people, their emotions and feelings and also uh, describing whatever uh, things around them. Now we are going to concentrate mainly on objects. Okay. So when you describe things, uh, it will be easier for you to uh, tell someone, okay, this is what it is. Like uh, uh, earlier we saw how uh, a person is asked to receive a few people at the airport and you gave a, uh, we gave a very good description of four people. Now, in case you lose something or you want somebody to bring something from another room or another house. So you have to describe, isn't it? Describe what that object is like. So now we are going to uh, see how a person is lodging a complaint at the police station. Okay, what is your handbag like? All of you carry a handbag or uh, you men carry a laptop bag. What is it like? Each bag may differ one from the other, isn't it? Uh, one may have a leather bag, a brown leather bag or one may have a black leather bag. Uh, ladies may have colorful bags matching to their uh, dresses. Uh, it may be flowery ones or it may be a canvas one. So all these descriptions make a lot of uh, change like when we have to talk to others for spoken English all these are very very important okay now at the police station i'm going to read a uh, conversation between one mrs gayatri and the police inspector and then i'm going to ask you questions let's see how well you listen at the police station okay this is describing objects we have been doing describing people and clothes and now we are going to do describing objects and here at the police station. Listen carefully Mrs. Gayatri. Good morning inspector. I'd like to report a missing handbag. Inspector. Good morning, madam. Sit down and give me the details as to where you lost the handbag, when you came to know it was lost and how it can be identified. Mrs. Gayatri. Sir, I was in the Route 23A bus this morning. As it was a peak hour, the bus was jam packed. When the bus reached my stop at Eggmore, I had to get down jostling through the standees with a handbag on my shoulder and a few files in my arms. I was pushed along till I reached the footboard and managed to get down just as the driver drove off. It was only there I realized that my handbag was missing. Inspector, please describe your handbag ma'am. Mrs. Gayatri, it is a black rectangular leather bag with a long tubular strap of the same material. It is of patent leather with a glossy finish. The bag is about uh, 18 inches into 12 inches in size with three compartments. The center compartment has a zip while each of the outer ones is closed with flaps and brass clasps. In the center of the clasp uh, there are five red stones in a string, in a ring, I'm sorry. In the right hand corner of one side is stuck a tiny cluster of yellow plastic flowers with green velvety felt leaves. The compartment on this side contains my phone book, diary, 
several old bills and receipts. The compartment on the other side contains a Revlon burgundy red lipstick, a beige face compact, a small pocket mirror, a packet of premium tissue paper and a pair of round sunglasses in its case. In the center compartment are my HPSC credit card, ICICI ATM card and an SBI debit cum ATM card. My office ID card and a copy of my salary slip are in a zipped pouch along with rupees 1500 in cash of 100 rupees denomination. There may be other items like a cello gripper, blue ballpoint pen, some hair clips, toothpicks, I'm not sure. Inspector, okay ma'am, you have given us a fairly good description. We'll do our best to help you. Just hand in a formal complaint to the constable who's seated in the next room and get a copy of the first information report, which is FIR, First Information Report. Mrs. Gayatri, thank you, sir, Inspector. And don't forget to leave your phone number and address uh, for contact, Mrs. Gayatri. Of course, I shan't forget. Thank you once again. Okay, this is a conversation at the police station and it's a very uh, normal happening, people losing handbags in a bus because uh, there are pickpocketers and they try to steal uh, handbags and uh, ATM cards and all that. So this uh, Mrs. Gayatri has lost a lot of things in the bag. She's lost 1500 rupees but she's lost so many ATM cards and um, other credit cards and all that plus a few lipsticks and uh, she has also given a description of the handbag. Shall we uh, have you listen carefully? Now you are going to recollect and uh, we are going to write down the description of the bag. Okay, now between whom is the conversation? Between Mrs. Gayatri and the inspector. Okay. Now what has Mrs. Gayatri lost? She's lost her handbag. Okay. Now describe the handbag. It is a leather handbag. It's made of leather and it has a, it's made of patent leather and uh, and it has a, with glossy finish, it has a glossy finish. Okay. And then there are a cluster, oh, okay. Now the straps are, oh, the straps are also of the same tubular, same leather. Okay. Sometimes the bag will be canvas and the straps will be leather or so, vice versa. Here we have the same. Uh, straps made of the same leather. Then it has a cluster of flowers of uh, what color flowers? A cluster of yellow flowers. And green velvety leaves. And 
green velvety leaves and it has three compartments okay three compartments of which the center compartment what does it contain how many credit cards it has um, uh, H HBSC credit card ICICI H HBSC credit card then IC ICI ICICI ATM card and then what else do they have? State Bank of India SBI credit card what else does it contain uh, id card office id card and um, also uh, a salary slip then some receipts receipt the p is silent you don't see a receipt it is a receipt okay it's pronounced as receipt receipts then hair clips most important a revlon lipstick revlon a uh, burgundy color lipstick then beige color uh, compact case compact powder What else can you uh, hair clips okay and toothpicks and all that pocket mirror okay etc. So we have a detailed description of the handbag and uh, what color is a black rectangular le leather bag okay handbag is black rectangular some will be roundish in shape some will be oblong this this is rectangular black rectangular uh, one with um, clasps with what clasp? Um, flaps and brass clasp. Okay, here you have a detailed description of a bag. See now anybody like if you give a complaint, uh, if you go and give a complaint for a handbag, if you just say a black handbag and I go and go to the police station and say it's my handbag, uh, it's also black. Um, see, the policeman will be at a loss uh, whether to uh, give it to me or to you, isn't it? But if you had given a detailed description of your handbag like this, the contents of the handbag also, then I cannot go and claim it because it's a detail. See, handbag, black rectangular with brass clasps. Then, it's made of patent leather with glossy finish. Some may have a very uh, rough finish, some may have a glossy finish. Then straps, tubular, 
same leather, made of same leather. A cluster of yellow flowers and green velvety leaves uh, on the outside. Three cup compartments it has inside. The center compartment contains the HBSC uh, credit card, ICICI ATM card, SBI State Bank of India credit card, office ID card, uh, beige compact powder and pocket mirror. So what more do you need? Anybody can and also uh, 1500 rupees and rupees 1500 in cash. Okay. So all this put together, it makes it very clear uh, whoever the owner is, it can be given. Maybe if the robber or the thief had taken away the money, he may not be using the Revlon lipstick and all, isn't it? Burgundy lipstick and salary slip and receipts and hair clips, he may not need it. So he could have taken uh, the HPSC credit card and all that and also the money. But at least the remaining things will be there to identify your handbag. So this way, uh, when you talk at a police station, you can give a beautiful description. You should know how to describe. Okay. So in spoken English, this is also a very important aspect where you describe objects. Okay. Now I'm going to give you different uh, types of describing uh, things. Uh, maybe. Now, I'm going to come to your house, okay? I want to come to your house and uh, I don't know, like you've given me the address, but I still want some more identification as to how your house will be. And so, you have to give me a better picture of your house. Let's see, we'll put it in a dialogue and let's see how it goes. Take down, uh, you can use all this for describing your handbags or um, the words that are used and all that. We will go on to the next one. Okay, now we are going to have an imaginary dialogue between Geeta and Sita. Now Geeta wants to come to Sita's house to give her an invitation for her daughter's birthday party. Okay, and she uh, wants to know um, I mean apart from the address nowadays you know in Chennai it's very difficult to locate uh, anybody's house. So uh, because there are old numbers, new numbers and umpteen number of streets and uh, by streets. So she's asking for a landmark and also the description of the house and we are going to see how she describes her house. Okay. Let's see. Um, Geeta. This is over the phone, okay? Telephonic conversation this is. Over the phone she is asking Geeta. Hello, uh, is it? Sita. Sita. Yes, Sita speaking. May I know who's calling? Who's calling here? Who apostrophe is? That is who is calling? Gita. Hi, Sita. This is Gita, your friend. This is Geeta, your friend. I would like to invite you
personally personally means in person okay personally for my son's birthday party can you give me the address your address and landmark to make my visit easier okay sita now replies hi kita you can give an exclamatory mark okay hi kita it's a pleasant surprise well the address well my let us see my house number number is One, two, three. W block. Um, we can say um, Adiar. Chennai. Uh, the landmark is um, it is next to a grocery a grocery shop grocery means what all the provision things that you buy grocery shop um, what shall we name Morgan stores my house is a gray building with red border red border okay um, a fleet of steps a fleet of steps okay a fleet of steps um, goes from from the ground floor to the first floor that is outside okay 
in some houses the steps will be inside the house whereas this house uh, it is outside okay and there is a covered car park there is a there is a covered car park where a blue colored blue colored hero I mean Honda Civic will be parked will be parked what else can we say um, there is a tree see Adia there are a lot of trees isn't it there is a huge tree huge neem tree outside the house house uh, the house has a grill what color gate black has a grilled black grilled gate okay and what else uh, can we describe with a post box okay with a milk box on it okay so Geeta says thank you Sita Sita I shall be there in the evening or I shall I shall see you in the evening so Geet has planning to visit Sita and Sita has given a very descriptive uh, um, descript, I mean she's given a very beautiful description of a house so there won't be any problem at all for Geeta to find Sita's house now shall we read the dialogue this is a telephonic conversation between Geeta and Sita we'll uh, just read I'm going to read it out and you'll see how beautifully Sita explains to Geeta the description of a house and how it will be easy for uh, Geeta to find a house to come and visit her. Okay, Geeta. Hello, is it Sita? Sita. Yes, Sita speaking. May I know who's, who's calling? Geeta. Hi Sita, this is Geeta, your friend. I would like to invite you personally for my son's birthday party. Can you give me your address and landmark to make my visit easier? So immediately Sita listens to her and says, Hi Geeta, it's a pleasant surprise. Well, my house number is 123 W Block 12th Street, Adyar, Chennai. The landmark is, it is next to a grocery shop. Murugan stores. My house is a grey building with red border. A fleet of steps goes from the ground floor to the 
to the first floor and there is a covered car park where a blue colored Honda Civic will be parked. There is a huge neem tree outside the house. The house has a black grilled gate with a milk box on it. Okay and uh, okay. Immediately Geeta says, thank you Sita, I shall see you in the evening. So evening, see, Geeta is going to visit Sita and uh, she has given a beautiful, Sita has given a beautiful description of her house. Isn't it very easy for uh, you when somebody gives you a proper description of a place, it's easy to locate, isn't it? So this is the way you describe objects. Uh, maybe inside the house also you can have a beautiful description like if you want to buy a house uh, from a real estate owner uh, he may tell you like it's a um, I mean house built on 1500 square feet and if he gives a description like as you enter there is a dining room I mean there is a hall or the drawing room and then there are two bedrooms on either side with the um, huge French windows outlooking a lawn and then uh, as you go straight in there is a kitchen with uh, mod a modular uh, kitchen with a, a chimney and everything and a huge sink to wash vessels and outside the kitchen there is a wash area where you can keep your washing machine and also there is a veranda there, a balcony like veranda, ground floor, you call it a veranda and uh, there is a small gate which goes out to the backyard where you have, where you have a lot of uh, trees uh, and plants and uh, uh, you have a pump outside. See all the, this will uh, let your imagination see right before your eyes what uh, the description would be in reality okay so this is how you explain objects okay it's very important for your spoken English next I'm going to give you uh, John's room and I'm going to give you some uh, fill ups with clue words and you're going to do it so have you taken down this dialogue okay okay I am going to give you a very interesting uh, work for you. I am going to give you a passage describing John's room with a lot of omissions and I am going to give you some key words where you are going to fill up the blanks. Okay, So you will know how to describe a person's room. Okay, Shall we do it? Okay, Let us do it now. Take down. John has rented a room near his college. The room is on the dash floor. dash floor of the house. It is a small dash room. Okay. Facing South. It has a dash 
Picasso. Large dash. On the south along the dash walls. are two doors one opening one opening onto a Dash with two Okay. Mm. Okay, next line. The other door Opens into a dash passage. There is a Dash stairway leading down to the dining room. On the other end, is a dash stairway leading to to the terrace. Okay, now I'll give you the words here. Let's see whether you are able to. Balcony, uh, grilled 
narrow spiral winding Okay. Okay, how many blanks are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, I have given you the clue words. Have you finished? If you haven't finished, I am going to help you. So, what is this? This is John's room. Okay, and you are going to? Fill up John's room. Okay. John has a rented room near his college. The room is on the uh, which floor? Which floor? First floor. Okay. So first here. First floor of the house. It is a small house. It is a small house facing south. Okay, next one. It has a large, what can we say? Large dining room. Dining room. Dining room on the south along the dash walls are two doors red colored okay so this will be four along the red colored walls are two doors one opening on to a dash with two foot high. Okay. Grilled wall. One, one opening on to a uh, dash with two foot high. Okay. One opening on to a balcony. One opening on to a balcony. What number is this? Um, spiral first two. 3, 4, 5. Balcony with 2 foot high grilled wall. This will be 6. Okay. 6. The other door opens into a narrow passage. There is a curved narrow have I written? Okay. There's a curved stairway. So this will be eight. Curved stairway leading down to the dining room. On the other end is a what is left now? Spiral winding. Spiral winding, you know, going in circular motion. Spiral winding, stairway leading to the terrace, okay. So have you written all the blanks now? Now you have a full description of John's room or John's house.
house or room okay small little house which he calls it his room and uh, that is where he stays now beautiful description of a house isn't it so this also you should know when you learn spoken english you should learn to describe not only people and things also houses okay so i'm sure you have become well versed now in all this